Good morning and welcome. This is Pastor Lucy Painter with your daily insights. And today we continue to unpack more about outpouring and what happens after outpouring. There is demonstration, demonstration of power. Jesus said that you shall know them by the fruits. And as we get into this, I want to just put out a disclaimer in this introduction part. I am going to make a few statements. And as I make these statements, I just want to let everybody know that Jesus loves you no matter where you are. You may have found yourself in a pit, but there is nowhere too deep that the love of Christ cannot get you from. So, we humans, when conditions are set right, are very gullible. And that is why you find people subscribing to insanely extreme ideologies and beliefs. Take, for example, the people who join cults. The world they get sucked up into, the things they do, and the practices they defend do not make sense to anyone outside of those cults. And yet, as bizarre as those ideologies are, cults still manage to suck up fairly normal and healthy people. And I would add, even very educated people. Cults have a culture of love bombing in their initial stages to recruit. They flood their targets with flattery, validation, and affection. They capitalize on making you feel special and unique. They target people who are most susceptible to recruitment, people who are emotionally vulnerable, youths who are trying to form their identity, people who are under certain stress and need, but people who can be manipulated to further the goal of their cult. Cult recruiters are pretty persuasive individuals because they have an agenda to settle. And that's how members of Heaven's Gate were convinced that by committing mass suicide, they would leave their bodily containers and enter into the spaceship behind the hill pop comet. That is how the leader of the branch Davidians managed to convince his followers that he was the Messiah and all the women were his spiritual wives. So I've just named but a few which we have seen the effect and its sad outcome. But it's so sad to note that even in our day-to-day living that there are cults that are still blooming, that are still recruiting. And so as we talk about the demonstration of power, As we begin this topic, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord is going to help us and we will be able to be a witness when we see demonstration of power. We will be able to be a witness which power has been demonstrated. In the book of 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4 to 6, Paul tells the Corinthians, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age, all of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. You know, as we talk about persuasion, It's good to understand that Paul was one of the most persuasive preachers in the history of the church. I've taken a course in public speaking and one of the uh, skills or styles of speaking is persuasive. So he was one of the persuasive preachers. Yet we see him in this text stating that he did not rely on his own ability to persuade people. Paul acknowledges that neither his style of teaching nor the content of his teaching was so good that it could appeal to the taste of the Corinthians. The result of his teachings were attributed not were not attributed to human skill but to the spirit of God as the source of the power and success. 
Paul acknowledged how insufficient he was, but still preached the whole counsel of God. And this is what we as believers, and if you are a minister of the Word of God, we should ask for this, to preach nothing but Christ until people are brought to believe and to the salvation of their souls. Paul did not bring men to believe with enticing words and his persuasive reasoning. He did not use floweriness to captivate and charm people into believing his message. And this oratory efficiency was something that the Greeks of his time held high in regard. And yet Paul disregarded this notion to let the Spirit of God furnish the evidence of the origin of what he was preaching. He let the Holy Spirit demonstrate his power through the gifts of time, through miracles, and the conversion that followed his teaching. It was through divine power and the efficacy that souls were converted when the human effort could not have worked. I want you to look and see this. When the power of the Holy Spirit is in effect, lives are transformed. He diffuses through hearts. His work is demonstrated. There is no greater demonstration that when a lost sinner is brought to the peace of the cross, Paul demonstrated here the difference between human ways and God's way. Paul uses persuasion to move people uses it's not Paul people uses persuasion to move mind God on the other hand uses demonstration to move the mind of the people demonstration leaves absolutely no doubt about the workings of the Holy Spirit it inspires implicit faith and conversion and all this is exhibited in words by the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I want to say that. All this is exhibited inwards by the work the Holy Spirit does in the heart and it is outwardly by the performance of miracles. So whatever the work the Holy Spirit is doing inside, it is brought outside, it is manifested outside by the miracles. And I want you to just grasp, get the topic that the lesson that Paul is trying to teach us today and the church in Corinth, that rhetoric and logic only persuade weakly and they only appeal to the affections rather than inspiring understanding and sound judgment. It leads us to make conclusions based on natural principles. And this is why Paul avoided using his own wisdom, lest he falls into temptation of demonstrating the concept of the gospel based on the principles of natural reasons only. And let me note this and put a disclaimer here. Paul was not again studying the word of the Lord, but he was again studying it for mere ornamental value. And the application of our wisdom in order to push our own ideas instead of letting the Holy Spirit direct the work that is his to direct. And so Paul was advocating is that we speak intelligibly so that people may understand. That we may make conclusion from scripture principles. That we base our preaching on the principles of revelation and build what is spiritual upon what is spiritual. This way, even when we use our natural reasoning, it will always be to illustrate and confirm what is already confirmed by divine revelation. Hallelujah. I know there is a place for intelligence. Yes, we should be intelligent to our listeners decent and reasonable enough. We should speak the truth boldly, but we should never twist the gospel in the hope of making converts. 
And as I say this, as I come to the conclusion, it is rather unfortunately that some of the preaching strategies in today are founded in on human wisdom. They are centered on emotions, entertainment, and human nature, which on face value yield great response. But from the spiritual standpoint, these tactics do not yield results for the kingdom of God. Some of us ministers of the world in this generation, uh, it is sad because some use deception to roll up people into the church under the gush of winning them to Christ. Forgetting that what they draw people with is what will they will be drawn to. If ever that thing is no longer available for them, they will go right back to what they were before. Because human wisdom that was used to persuade them into that church can also be used to persuade them out of it. know today is deep stuff yeah because we are going to look deeper into the demonstration of power so while Paul is not desperate to appeal to the Corinthians love for human wisdom his message is loaded with wisdom that one who thinks with a kind of mind may not discern he says we do however speak a message of wisdom among the mature See, Paul used a language that his listener could understand depending on whether they were the new believers or not. To those who could chew hard foods, he gave hard foods. To those who needed soft food, he gave soft food. The hidden wisdom bestowed by the Holy Spirit upon him enabled him to make this distinction. When we let the Holy Spirit take charge The plain facts of the gospel that tend to be repellent to human nature, human intellect, start to elicit the conviction we seek to see in the people. And it is my prayer that we aspire to bring people to the kingdom of God through things that are of the kingdom. That we seek to bring people to the kingdom of God, not through persuasive arguments, but through surrendering to the will of the Spirit of God so that he can use us to appeal to the conscience and to cut through their hearts and produce the change of heart that only he can bring. I know this introduction is quite loaded, but I pray the Holy Spirit is going to make you understand what he is saying to the church and to you as a believer. In Jesus' name. Shalom. This is Pastor Lucy Painter, and this is Demonstration of Power, Day 1.